Hello, and welcome to Pastoral Ministry 401. I'm Steve Googe, representing Fruitland Baptist Bible College, and I'm your instructor for this course. Thank you for joining us today. I hope this session will be helpful for you and practical as you minister for the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastors and Christian ministers often share personal and collective experiences with the people they serve. These relationships operate on multiple levels simultaneously within a complex maze of interactions. As ministers, we share life's journey from its beginning to its end. Indeed, ministry is where the rubber meets the road. For this session, I've chosen to introduce the five primary moments in life. They are the beginning of life, that is birth, salvation, that is the new birth, the callings of life, number four is the commitments of life, and number five is the end of life or death. These are not always experienced in a neat, predictable cycle. Life often defies our tidy expectations, particularly when we take on the responsibility of guiding others through pastoral ministry. Consider, for example, the pastor in a rural setting whose congregation is primarily composed of senior adults. In this case, the majority of his pastoral ministry responsibilities will come at the end of life. On the other hand, in a suburban church with numerous programs and ministries, many attract a large number of parents with their children, but they fail to engage senior adults. So every church field is different. Each one can be compared to another one, and the environments will be totally different. Even when pastors are available to all church members and the broader community, some people who are suffering may avoid the fiery preacher or the weak shepherd and instead share their concerns with a friend or even a stranger. Different households within the same church can have very different responses to pastoral presence. One family might resent the pastor's involvement in their personal matters, while another household might really rely upon the pastoral care of the pastor with great appreciation. Moreover, what one person experiences as deeply spiritual, another might dismiss, dismiss as irrelevant or unimportant. These variations significantly impact the effectiveness of congregational ministry. Both young and old members of the church may feel that their minister either values and supports them in their daily struggles or rejects them and remains distant from life's harsh realities. At best, the religious leader is seen as someone who understands the human lifespan, applies biblical principles to real-life situation, and creates clear pathways between God and people. At each key moment in life, pastors and their congregations share a conviction that they can, and I quote, receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need, close quote. This is a section from Hebrews chapter 4. With this faith, a caring pastor can meaningfully participate in the profound and moving dramas of life. Now let's turn our attention to the first of the primary moments of life, that is the beginning of life. In this session, you will learn how the beginning of life is not only a physical, but also a spiritual event. We will discuss when care at the beginning of life actually begins, the need for joint efforts to provide care, and the various types of care required at this stage. Also, I will provide some scripture verses that can be used while visiting parents of the newborn. Becoming a parent is a journey full of questions and complexities. The challenges of parenthood often drive young adults to seek God, especially when they face difficult issues. According to a survey conducted by a chaplain among maternity patients in a metropolitan hospital, about 50% of those interviewed 
interpreted childbirth as a spiritual experience. In biblical times, the birth of a child was viewed as a divine blessing, a time for joy, a reason for dedication. Thus, the experience of becoming a parent is a prime occasion for pastoral attention, for pastoral care, for pastoral ministry. Pastoral care for children and young people properly begins with the minister's concern for their parents. Even before a child is born or conceived, the pastor should care for them. The minister and the church should show their care and involvement in the lives of these parents-to-be. There may be situations when the birth of a child prompts the need of a joint effort from a minister, a physician, maybe even a lawyer and social worker. This might occur in cases involving infants with special needs or those lacking adequate food, shelter, and safety. Recognizing the varied experiences that come with the beginning of life is crucial in pastoral ministry. For some families, this moment is one of celebration and dedication, perhaps involving a parent-child dedication service at your church. These services are an excellent opportunity to encourage parents to raise their children in a godly home and to remind the church of its role in supporting the family. However, it's essential to remember that mothers may sometimes feel exhausted or even depressed rather than joyful after childbirth. During pastoral visits, it's important to be sensitive to the mother's emotional state and to offer comfort and especially understanding. Successful attending to the needs of both parents and children depends upon the pastor's intentions, the patient's receptivity, and the gracious action of the Holy Spirit. Building a strong relationship with the parents before the birth of their child is crucial. By doing so, they will be more likely to welcome and appreciate your visit when the child arrives. Here are some scripture passages that may be helpful during visits to new parents, whether in the hospital or shortly after they return home. And I'm not going to read the passage. I'll just mention them. Genesis 16:11, Genesis 21:1 through 7, 1 Kings 13:2, Isaiah 9:6, Psalm 27:10, Proverbs 8:32, and then Matthew 1:21. Matthew 18, 1 through 6, Matthew 19, 13 through 15, Mark 10, 13 through 16, and Luke 18, 15 through 17. The role of a pastor in the lives of their congregants is both profound and multifaceted. Pastoral ministry spans the entire human experience from the beginning of life to its end, and it requires sensitivity, wisdom, and a deep commitment to applying biblical principles to everyday situations. As we have discussed, life's primary moments do not always follow a predictable pattern, making it essential for pastors to remain adaptable and responsive to the diverse needs of the congregation. By offering support, guidance and spiritual care during key life events such as the birth of a child, pastors help to create meaningful connections between God and the individual. This not only strengthens the family's faith journey but also fosters a sense of community within the church. It's vital for pastors to be present and attentive, building relationship with parents and families even before a child's birth and then they continue to offer support afterward. In doing so, pastors provide a vital link to God's grace and mercy, ensuring that both new parents and their children experience the love and support of their faith community. Ultimately, pastoral care is about walking alongside people, sharing in their joys and sorrows, and helping them navigate the complexities of life with faith and hope. As pastors remain faithful in their calling, they become instruments of God's love, bringing comfort, encouragement, and spiritual guidance to those they serve. 
This ongoing ministry is not just a responsibility, but a sacred privilege that reflects the heart of Christ's love for his people. This ends the presentation.